the message box will come out. So I'll put OK. It's not going to do anything. So clear, we'll put it back to zero. I have to come up with a dialogue. I'm starting to show you there is uh, the touch screen on my computer. I had to turn the lights off and I couldn't, couldn't really see what was going on. So it was kind of hard. But let me show you the graphic interface for the Mac, the Mac 3 screen for the table saw. Uh, let me go ahead and open the Mac 3 program. It'll bring you up to the main screen here and the familiar reset button is flashing and the red LED on this part calibrate is also red with the three LEDs turn red. You can see here face height and tilt the arrows on this part right here. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, reset the the reset button first. Uh, the ticker right here is telling you that press reset emergency mode active. So let's press on the reset and the e stop label comes up because this button will be the e stop and the reset. Now the first thing that we have to do is calibrate the machine which means putting all the axes to home or zero on the limit switches. So let's calibrate it and immediately calibrate it because there's no machine attached to the interface. Once uh, the machine homes, then the, the arrows are zero and the machine is ready to go. Uh, we have here four different buttons on the bottom. They are consistent all over the pages. And up here we have the ticker and the two flashing LEDs. Well, the flashing LED and this whole LED for the calibration. These buttons are permanent on all the pages of the program. So you're going to see them in each page. So this is actually the screen we're at. This is the setting screen. Uh, it's got all the different parameters for the saw, which are the the blade tilt maximum, the blade height maximum, and the fence uh, park position maximum, which is 36 inches in this case, but you can enter any number here that you saw uh, is going to have. You might not have three and a half inches of uh, blade, so you might have, I don't know, two inches of blade. Oh, here it came to the calculator here. Let me go ahead and, and get rid of that calculator. And you come here to the operator and add a calculator to just get rid of it. So if I now click on each of those DROs, I can change the numbers with the keyboard. That's the, the screen for the settings. Okay, so I was telling you about these four buttons. And the first button is height tilt, fence, and power. These buttons are, are going to change labels or uh, call different pages in between the pages they're in. So let's say that the first thing is hide and we click on it and we can see there is a table saw graphic. It's got also a little LED. Even though it's in zero, for some reason these LEDs won't reset to zero. So, but if I come here and and push on the blade to zero button, then the LED turns off and simulates that the, the blade went back inside the saw. Now we have these preset buttons here at the top with the most common um, heights that you might encounter, which is one sixteen of an inch, one eighth, quarter, half, three quarters, one inch, two inches, three inches, and maximum. If I come here to maximum and press on it, the, the saw is going to come to 3.5 inches that is slit right here, the inch units. But anyway, uh, you have three and a half inches is to the maximum. If I try to increase with these buttons right here, which is increments of 1 16, 1 inch, 1 quarter, and 1 half, these buttons won't do nothing while the machine is in maximum. Return to a value less than three and a half, let's say half an inch, then it'll it'll bring back to half an inch, and then I can add another half an inch here, and it'll be one inch, or I can add a sixteenth of an inch, and it'll be an inch with uh, sixteen. I can bring the blade to zero, and right here on this part, 
it says manual entry you can select with the DRO any value that you might want to be in so like let's put 2.01 let's say that you want that for some reason then you you enter it and then move to that height and it's going to move exactly to there now if I clear it it'll come to zero and then I can move it back to zero let's say that I want the height of half an inch of the blade so let's go to the tilt screen we have to select uh, blade to zero so the LEDs will work or you can select any tilt value that you need you can see the presets right here from 5 degrees to 45 degrees and increments of 5 degree or you can increment in between through 1 to 4 right so let's say that I want what 5 degrees that's 5 degrees inclination of the saw let's say that I got 5 degrees and I want to increment by 1 that'll be 6 degrees or by another 4 that'll be 10 all right if I come to 45 degrees also you can see that the LED is flashing there are uh, simulating that is turning the, the handle right there on the side which is for the tilt so we got 45 degrees and if I want to increment it won't do nothing because it's up to the limit if I for some reason try to make an entry of let's say 46 degrees and tell it to tilt to 46 it's gonna bring out this message box that it says tilt limit is exceeded so it won't let you do that so if I clear it and go back to zero you can go back to zero from there okay we can go back to the next part which is fence if I select uh, the fence to zero button then the, uh, the LED will turn on indicating that my fence is close to the blade to zero right also I got some presets here not a lot of them because um, you know you got one inch two inches three inches we don't want to fill the screen with more buttons let's say these are the most usual ones so I say uh, we're gonna at six inches we just push on that six inch button and it'll take you there As you can see it's also flashing when it's not on zero and the fence move six inches to the right then you can do your cut and uh, you can increment I don't know the same thing right here one quarter inch or one eighth of an inch and you can do one sixteenth of an inch and then you go another sixteenth and then another sixteenth right you keep incrementing sixteen by sixteenth uh, we had to tilt zero degrees we had the fence two inches now we have to turn the power on the saw so let's go to power and we'll bring you to this screen which is it's got the same buttons to change pages down here and you just got the saw button and the LED to indicate when it's on or off the dust collector and the auxiliary so we turn it on then even the switch will change labels to say turn it off so it's like a latch on push on switch so that's turned on turn the dust collector on and turn the auxiliary on and then you can push on the button again then it'll turn it off turn it off usually um, this one is kind of independent because it's got its own code but to turn the flood to turn to turn them on you can do it individually from each button but to turn them off you can do it from either one of these because they're connected to the mist and the flood and the code to turn them off is the same that's how it's gonna work I've got an extra space here for future use once you finish your cut then you turn it off and you go back to uh, whatever you need to change let's say to tilt or to fence or to a height and then you just modify and go back you don't want to go back to the screen you can always press the tab key and it will bring you the same power buttons right here on the side and you can turn them on and off from here so this is basically what the interface for the saw is and uh, I try to do it the best I could with three 
screens to make it so you don't have to use the DROs to enter the most used measurements that you might encounter. This is not technically a CNC saw. It's actually using all the movements on the saw, but it won't run any G code. So I wouldn't call it CNC for that. It's not automatic. Anyway, uh, this is how the interface works and I hope you like it. I'm going to make it available on the description of the video so you can download the, the graphics and the set file for free. I appreciate that you're uh, checking it out and I hope you have use for it and maybe you can implement it on your saw. But for right now, I'm just going to just put it available there, see what you think about the interface. If you have any comments, you can leave them on the comment section and uh, I would appreciate that. That'll help my channel. And if you like it, then give it a like and subscribe. So until the next video, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you then.